When I was a kid, there was a gangster, real old school type, Rex Calabrese. He was a big deal. He helped people. He saw you on the street, he called out to you. When I'm 14 or something, he has a heart attack and dies. Still holding a cigar. In my neighborhood, they throw a parade in his honor. A freaking parade. I mean, it wasn't fancy, but it was a gesture. To show love for what he meant. Can you imagine to be remembered like that? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They dropped a brand new trailer for The Penguin with Colin Farrell. It's meant to be a spinoff of the Robert Pattinson Batman movie, so it's set inside that universe. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. I'll explain how it fits into the timeline. I'm sure there'll be a ton of questions about that. In the way that Matt Reeves is sort of working in his new series, because James Gunn also revealed that he's doing an Arkham Asylum series, but that series will be canon to the DCU as opposed to this series, which is only canon to the Robert Pattinson Batman universe. It sounds more confusing than it actually is. It sounds like that Arkham show is going to be something a little bit different. But we actually see what looks like a version of Arkham from the Robert Pattinson Batman movie during this trailer, including a bunch of comic book characters, brand new ones and ones that we saw from the Batman movie. If you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes when they start airing later this year. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. They say fall, but that usually means sometime around September or October at least. It could wind up being as late as November, so we'll see. It'll be one of the big DC things happening this year because like the next big James Gunn DCU movie or the first real DCU movie won't be till Superman next year. Now the new title is just Superman. They're not calling it Superman Legacy anymore. There's also supposed to be that Creature Commandos series, which is canon to the DCU, but it'll be animated. They didn't say exactly when that's going to premiere, but it'll be sometime around this too. So you'll have animated DC and live action DC happening at the same time at the end of the year. It looks pretty solid. It's meant to be sort of like Scarface for the Penguin, like Penguin's Scarface story and his rise to power and prominence to become more like comic book Penguin by the end of this series. I came to Penguin and the idea of Batman when Burgess Meredith played Penguin and Adam West played Batman. To me, his character is kind of like Scarface. He's totally underestimated and he knows he can be more. I say hello to my little friend! Generally, Matt Reeves said that it's meant to bridge the gap in the timeline between the events of the first Batman movie and the second Batman movie. So when things pick up in the first couple of episodes, it's only meant to have been like a couple of days, like less than a week or so since the end of the Batman movie. All of Gotham is still meant to be kind of underwater because of what the Riddler did at the end of the first movie. And essentially, the Penguin is in this mad dash for power with the rest of the mob bosses that are left alive in Gotham trying to grab Carmine Falcone's territory, his organization basically in shambles now that he's dead. Power abhors the vacuum, so Penguin sees his opportunity to rise here. Me, I want what's coming to me. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tony? The world, Chico. And everything in it. Some of the big villains during the series seem that they're going to be Salvatore Moroni, who's playing another big comic book villain. He's one of the other major mob bosses. We see Penguin talking to him. He's played by Clancy Brown in what looks like Blackgate Penitentiary. Most people remember Clancy Brown from the DC Universe as the voice of many versions of Lex Luthor. He's fantastic. I mean, he's done so many voiceover roles. He literally just showed up during Invincible Season 2 as the version of General Craig. Like, I literally just posted that video. He was in the recent episode. You know, I've carried this around for years, waiting for just the right moment. But now that it's here, I almost feel a little let down. How did a mere moment on Earth turn you into a weak, sentimental traitor? If you remember during the events of the first movie, they explained sort of the history of the Robert Pattinson Batman universe. Carmine Falcone basically turned against the other mob bosses using Thomas Wayne's foundation that they'd turned into their own personal piggy bank to launder their money. 
Salvatore Moroni had been the one behind the drops, which they explained as this big drug that's making its way around the city. Carmine Falcone wanted his territory, so Carmine sold him out to the police, framed him for a bunch of stuff, got him thrown in prison, and then took over his territory. Generally, the way that Matt Reeves has talked about it, like the vibes of their scenes in the trailer, make it seem like Salvatore Moroni hasn't lost his edge in prison. Like he's still trying to rule from behind bars. Like he's going to try and reclaim all of his territory now that Carmine is dead. On top of that, you have a lot of Carmine's family who are still alive. Kristen Milioti is playing his daughter, who's Penguin's love interest during the series. They might wind up introducing some kind of twist where she tries to take over her father's organization, which would make her a competing force against Penguin. Then you have all the people that are left in Carmine's organization that are still loyal to his memory and don't want Penguin to take over. So they're going after him too. So it's one of those deals where Penguin is trying to vie for power within that former organization and a bunch of people from all different sides and different mob factions are coming for him. That's why we make all the Scarface references. They don't want to make him seem like an anti-hero, like they're not doing that to him. You're still meant to look at him as a villain, but you're meant to root for the villain, sort of like a Sopranos kind of way. Penguin doing his best Tony Soprano. Just starting at the beginning of the trailer going through shot by shot, there are a couple flashes here. The ring on his finger is probably meant to be representative of his rise to power, like the ring of rulership. One ring to rule them all. This kid is someone that he finds on the streets and then takes in and becomes one of his loyal lieutenants, eventually. It sounds like his speech about Rex Calabrese during the trailer is him talking to that kid, explaining how when he was younger, he looked up to him and how he became this really big person, this big figure in Gotham City basically using it as a template for his own rise to power. Like, can you imagine what it would be like for people to love you that way, to remember you that way? Rex Calabrese is also a big comic book character, but he was introduced during the New 52, so relatively recent comic book character. He was known as the Lion. He's meant to have ruled Gotham City before he was pushed out by Carmine Falcone's gang. That's why Penguin is saying this is happening back when he was a teenager. It sounds like they aren't doing everything from his comic book backstory. What they did, though, is they retconned him in the comics to be the biological father of Catwoman. During the events of the Batman movie, they were going for more of the long Halloween Easter eggs where they imply in that story that Carmine Falcone is Catwoman's biological father. In the comics, he continues to try and influence things from inside Black Cape Penitentiary, but in the context of the TV show in the Batman universe, Penguin says that when he was a 14-year-old kid, Rex Calabrese wound up killing over from a heart attack with a cigar in his mouth. Maybe there was foul play involved, maybe this was part of Carmine Falcone's takeover, maybe he died naturally, we'll see. Generally, all the shady stuff that Carmine Falcone got up to, it sounds like he engineered his takeover, making it seem like it was a heart attack. Eventually, what happened to Penguin when he was younger, though, is that he went to work inside Carmine Falcone's organization and just rose up through the ranks of that, becoming one of his lieutenants. That's why you see him during the best of the Batman movie with Carmine Falcone all the time. They show a bunch of new locations from around Gotham City, so like we'll be visiting different parts of the city that we didn't go to during the Batman movie. Makes sense. Gotham City is a big, big place. Notice during the trailer, when he takes his car back, it's raining here. His umbrella, when he's waddling along here, makes him look like classic comic book Penguin. But they do explain the reason why he's limping is because he's got bum leg, like he got the little leg brace on here. He's visiting the wreckage of the Iceberg Lounge, his club, which is also from the comics. Like I said, this is taking place right after the events of the first movie, so Gotham City is still a disaster zone. The Iceberg Lounge is in tatters. Notice here when he's going up in the elevator, this shot is meant to mirror the same shot from the Batman movie with Bruce Wayne doing it, but he was going to Carmine Falcone's office, and this is meant to represent him basically going into Carmine's office as he's taking over his territory or trying to take over his territory. Then you basically see him battling it out with a bunch of other mobsters that will appear during this series and meeting with Salvatore Moroni. I'm not sure who this character is inside prison visiting someone. This looks like Arkham Asylum with the doctors working on one of the prisoners here. In general, you just see everybody wanting to kill the Penguin. There are a couple other things we learned about the series. Robert Pattinson was reportedly filming scenes on set during the last couple of weeks that they were doing episodes. So I think that Bruce Wayne Batman will show up at the end of this series just to help bridge the gap before the Batman 2 picks up. I think it's meant to be eight episodes long. Generally, all these HBO DC shows they're doing are about eight episodes long. I am sure there's going to be a ton of questions about how this is going to work with Creature Commandos and the other stuff they're working on. Like there's the Green Lantern HBO show that they're working on that probably won't air till either next year or the year after that at the pace that they're going. That is meant to be set inside the DCU with Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart that will be on the Justice League or the new version of the Justice League whenever James Gunn does that next movie. 
Just in terms of the movies, though, they're generally mostly just worried about getting Superman out and it doing well. Then we'll probably hear more about the DCU version of the Batman, who apparently is not going to be Robert Pattinson, even though that would be really easy just to say that he is the DCU Batman. James Gunn said the main reason why they're not doing that, at least right now, things could always change, but at least right now they're not doing that, is because Matt Reeves didn't want to have to deal with connecting things to all the other DC movies and characters. Like, he just wanted to tell stories inside Gotham City with the Batman characters, and they let him do that. They're like, okay, you can make a good movie, you're fine, do whatever you want. We'll just say that it's an Elseworlds story instead of an other universe, and you can just do anything. There have been a lot of rumors about them doing a version of Robin in the Batman 2, and I think what their plan is, is that they'll do the Batman 3, like it'll be a full trilogy, then after that, you won't see any other live-action versions of Batman besides the DCU Batman, but for a little while, there will still be two different versions of Batman. And even though a lot of people are still really upset with what happened during the Flash movie, the director of the Flash movie, Andy Muschietti, is still supposed to be directing the new live-action DCU, Brave and the Bold Batman movie. I would say of all the things in that movie, probably some of the best stuff that he did was the Batman-specific stuff, like Ben Affleck's Batman scenes and then Michael Keaton's Batman scenes. Like, he did Batman pretty well, so I feel like he could probably do a Batman movie pretty decently. But we probably won't learn who that new DCU Batman is going to be. Like, they won't announce the casting until after the Batman 2 comes out, which they also just delayed to 2026 because the script apparently isn't done for that yet. Matt Reeves is mostly focused on making this TV series this year in his Arkham TV series, but I don't think the Arkham TV series, which is apparently set in the DCU, won't happen until after the Batman 2, so it'll be a couple more years before that Arkham series happens. Generally, because the Matt Reeves Batman universe is still so self-contained, there's lots of stuff they can do. There's still Court of Owls, like a lot of stuff that they have not done in the movies yet. A lot of people want to see them do a live-action version of Hush. We'll see about that. Generally, the vibe of the tone of this universe is tend to be more real world, less fantastical than, say, like comic book Batman, which it sounds like the James Gunn Batman Brave and the Bold movie will be like it will lean more heavily into the more fantastical comic book side of Batman. But if there's any other Easter eggs or references that you spotted in this trailer footage that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Or if you have any questions about how this is all going to fit together with the episodes here in Matt Reeves' other series in the Batman 2, just write them below in the comments. Speaking of DC characters, we just heard about Henry Cavill showing up in Deadpool and Wolverine. Click here to learn about that. And click here for my new House of the Dragon Season 2 trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.